Welcome back to the studio. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this habanero pepper behind me. I'll throw it up on screen. Um, so this is something special that I did for Valentine's Day. And I painted this habanero pepper using a technique called complementary underpainting uh, in watercolor. So I'll show you from start to finish how I um, built up this illustration. If you're new here, my name is Lee Angold. I'm a botanical and natural science illustrator based in Kitchener, Waterloo, Canada. We're in my home studio right now, and on this channel, I share watercolor and other illustration techniques and tips, as well as some insight into my daily life as an illustrator. If this is content that you're interested in, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below. And now, let's get into the video. As with most of my illustrations, I'm starting out with a light pencil sketch. This time I'm using a 6H pencil so you can just barely see it on this recording. I only do a very minimal sketch, just drawing the most basic lines. I'm also taking some time to really observe where the different areas of colors are. You can't really see it from this angle, but my habanero pepper has an area that's more yellow and an area that's more orange, and the shadows are going to be different shades in those areas as well. I'm only drawing lines around where the areas of deepest shadow are and brightest highlights. This will give me a, an idea of where to fill in. Now I'm laying out colors onto my palette. So I'm starting with blues, which are the complement of the orange of the pepper. I'm actually using a lot of phthalo blue. It was looking more purple than I expected. As it turns out, it was kind of silly because when I thought about it a little bit more, I needed it to be more violet anyway. So you'll see the next color that I load out is actually a dioxazine violet. I'll leave a listing down below of all of the colors that I'm using. My palette, this is just a plate that I use as a palette. My palette was a little wet because I just rinsed it off. So you'll see the colors are bleeding into each other, but I'm not too worried about that. So now I'm also loading the body colors of the pepper in. So this is transparent orange or transparent pyrrole orange. Um, in a moment, you'll see me start adding new gamboge or Indian yellow to my palette. This color closely matches the yellower shades of this habanero. In the end though, I ended up changing this out. It's not shown on camera, but I ended up using Nickel Azo Yellow, um, which is a more transparent yellow, which I mixed with my transparent pyrrole orange. And finally, this is Quinacridone Magenta. Now, I'm testing all my colors out on the side of my paper. This won't show up in the final image, but it's just helping me to understand how all of these colors mix together. Now you'll see me start painting in the shadows in tones of blues and violets. These cool colors will help create cooler, more muted tones in the shadows, as you would see in real life. Violet is the complementary of yellow and blue is the complementary of orange. So in areas that are more orange, I'm making the mix bluer. In areas that are more violet, I'm making, or sorry, areas that are more yellow, I'm making the mix more violet. You can see me working generally left to right and building up the shadows. As I build up the shadows in lighter areas, I go back and darken the areas in deeper shadows. I'm trying to 
remember to leave some areas pure white. This will help make the subject pop out of the paper. Also, I want to be conscious of not putting down too much of the complementary color because anywhere where the complementary color is mixed with the body color of my pepper, it's going to appear somewhat duller. So in this case, what I ended up doing was actually more of the shadow than I really intended to, and it, it made for a more muted painting than, I, than my usual. But that's okay, it's just a slightly different style. And so here you're beginning to see a, what, what's beginning to look like a pepper after several layers. Now keep in mind, you're watching this at 10 times speed. So this past section took about a half hour of painting. And now you're beginning to see me drop in some of the oranges, just in the deepest shadows. So I'll start from the shadowed areas and work outwards. Occasionally mixing in some extra blue or purple just to punch those shadows even deeper. So you can start seeing the oranges start appearing. And again, I'm filling it in gradually but trying to remember to leave some areas pure white. Those are going to be the shiniest, brightest highlights. I'm working from the sides, again, leaving the brightest areas for last. For most of this painting, I've been using a size 3 brush, but now you'll start seeing me switch Sometimes I'm using a size 3, sometimes I'm using a shorter bristled size 0. So now it's beginning to look a little bit more like a pepper, but it's still quite muted. As I add more layers, it will get brighter and brighter. But because of the complementary underpainting, and the fact that I built it up quite a bit, it's always going to be a little bit more muted than the bright orange that you see on your screen of the real pepper. Here you can see the areas where I filled in where it used to be white or near white and now I've started filling in orange, how those areas appear brighter. Working around, I'm sorry for my face coming into camera, I have this tendency of squishing up very close to my image so I can see all the little details, but it does get in the way of the camera a little, so I was trying not to. Being very cautious, working with a dry brush, taking my time. In real time, it's now been about nearly two hours that I've been working on this pepper. And now, I'm beginning to add in the stem. What you don't see by this point is that I was pausing the camera, stepping away, taking a look, coming back. Seeing this at various scales and not always staring at one corner helps me to see the whole picture. Now I'm just adding some little textural details just trying to make it just a little bit more realistic and also adding some bright saturated oranges to try to bring that vibrancy back to the painting. But again, I don't want to fill in too much of the white area because that's what makes it look three-dimensional. And here I am blocking your view. Finally, I add, I go back in with my pencil and just indent some of the little areas of deepest shadow just to crisp it up. Sometimes working over the same area with paint can sort of make everything look a little fuzzy. 
Now I'm just adding the final details. In a moment, I'll show you the finished painting. Here you go. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Welcome back to the studio and meet Neuron. Neuron is my little studio assistant. He's going to rumble through this last segment. Um, he helps out in the studio by leaving paw prints and fur everywhere, especially on my artwork. Um, <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed watching my process for painting these habanero peppers. Um, and just let me know in the comments below what sort of other tutorials you'd like to see, um, what other water techniques you're interested in, watercolor techniques you're interested in, um, I'll be happy to share. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and comment below. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Say bye to the camera.